Ireland is said to be heading for a crisis, an energy crisis. Well, so the papers say. We're going to take a look today at what's happened in Ireland in the last few years and just where is it going. I hope you find it interesting. In looking at Ireland's energy mix, we look at primary energy usage by fuel and it's dominated by fossil fuels. For oil, read uh, transport and heating primarily and we can actually see the, the start of the impact of the pandemic where reduced uh, usage in oil products here. When we look to renewables, we can see that it's only this uh, this small band here, and indeed that's broken now by um, non-renewable wastes, wind, hydro, and biomass, and other renewables. This destined to grow in the future, but for now, Ireland is predominantly fueled by oil and gas. So if we look at uh, Ireland's gas production, uh, we can see here back in the uh, 1990 period uh, that Kinsale was the, the was the major producer, but it started to go on decline around about 1996, and the decline fell away right through until uh, 2015. Now, fortunately, during this time, Corrib was both found and eventually was put on stream after after a long, uh, a long time to actually get that project aligned and up and running. We can see the corresponding picture with uh, gas imports really ramping up when Kinsale went into decline, plateauing in this period of time here. Uh, and then as Corrib came on, on stream, there was less requirement for imported gas. Putting these two pieces together, and we can see that Throughout time, Ireland's gas consumption essentially has continued to rise for something like 30 years. Now, recently there have been talks of a 15% reduction. And this is what it would look like, taking the, the 2019 figure here. We would be looking at getting back to the sort of the, the volumes that were actually being used back in 2014, 2015. It is a reduction that is, is planned or hoped for, but uh, still there's a huge reliance on gas. If we take a look at the first of the major fields, it's the offshore Kinsale field. And here's a, a photograph here of the, uh, of the platform, one of two platforms at uh, Kinsale. And this is a, a cross section showing the geology, the A and the B sands with essentially gas around about uh, 3,000 feet in depth. Kinsale is located south southeast of, of Cork. It was part of a complex, so there was Kinsale, there was Seven Heads, and also Ballycotton tying back in. And a pipeline took the gas to the beach at the Inch Terminal. This is our entry for Kinsale in our Trove database. Now, Corrib, showing this picture of the infrastructure, there is nothing to see. Why? Because uh, the subsea wells here are actually piped back to the shore to the uh, refinery here at uh, Ballinaboy Bridge. This seismic line shows the Corrib structure that has been drilled up and a secondary feature here at Corrib North, which actually has, uh, has gas in it. It was a lengthy and costly development approval process. The current operator, Vermilion Energy, reckons that there's 105 million barrels of oil equivalent ultimately recoverable from the Corrib field. But as we see here, Corrib is already starting to decline at a significant rate. After decades of effort to try and promote the offshore exploration and millions of dollars spent by the industry in acquiring seismic and working up licenses, in the run-up to COP26, the Irish government decided to introduce legislation to ban new oil and natural gas exploration and extraction. And this was dated February 2021. Now, this had a major impact. And if we look at uh, how Ireland's offshore area was being promoted, there was interest in all of the blocks, the, the blue being under license and these yellow ones looking to convert license options into expiration licenses. That was the picture back in 2017. In 2020, we can see that very many of those blocks that were being considered have been dropped. The industry was seeing the, the mood turning against fossil fuel developments in Ireland and has walked away. Today, it is still a very challenging environment for oil and gas. So it's not all doom and gloom for Ireland. In fact, let's have a look at the future for oil and gas. And there's a couple of projects that we think are worthy of mention. One opportunity is Inishkia. And here you can see it's Inishkia gas field discovered gas field in Ireland. Well, Inishkia is not a gas field. It hasn't been discovered. And 
to add insult to injury, it's nowhere near here. So uh, a word of advice, if you do look for quality information, then go to quality publications. And we certainly would recommend Keyfax Energy and GeoExpro as being two fantastic sources of quality information. If we have a look at Inishkir and we look at the geology of it here, you can see in, here is the Corrib anticline here and gas in the Corrib sandstone in here. So this is a Triassic aged sandstone. Now, as we go on over here, this is the prospect. It's, it hasn't been drilled, so uh, it's a structure. It's a big structure and this is what it looks like on seismic. You can see quite a lot is going on here, a lot of faulting above. But this is the size of Corrib and here's Inishkir. Looks very interesting. This is the true location of it here. It's up in this block. When we look at a map at top Corrib sandstone, we can see this is the outline of Inishkir. Here is Corrib with all the wells drilled on it, and there's North Corrib. One thing that we look at is, if we look on this map, you could potentially see a fill and spill mechanism to actually bring gas right across into Inishkir. But from this cross-section, quite clearly, Corrib is not full to spill, so we wouldn't get gas actually spilling over and up into Inishkir. So Inishkir looks like it would have to rely on this source kitchen up here, this deep area where you generate a lot of oil and, or gas and uh, would actually fill this feature here. So, you know, there is uh, some subtle differences between the two. It does look to be a very large feature and uh, it's deeper than Corrib. I suggest it has to be drilled to find out what's there. This is our trove entry for Inishkir and you see uh, we've got quite a lot of information. Barry Row. Barry Row has been talked about in Ireland for years. And let's just take a quick look at Barry Row. It's down off southeast of Cork. And this is a cross section showing Barry Row. So underneath the, the chalk here, we see a series of Cretaceous sandstones. Now, there have been six wells drilled uh, over a distance of some 20 kilometers there from west to east. And you can see that gas was found in this upper sand oil in the middle sand and indeed this is the the main body of oil here in this uh, lower sand although there have also been some other sands found that have been oil bearing what is really difficult to understand is why no well has ever gone gone down and tried to test for this jurassic sand if this was full of oil no brainer i mean if, if if we had substantial quantities of hydrocarbon in deeper sand that would certainly get uh, Barry Row over the line. To date it's kind of struggled. It is it is a big accumulation but there's some concerns whether the field is compartmentalized and whether all the sands would actually flow and you'd need potentially more wells and a more expensive development to get it all. So the oil is waxy, the field is compartmentalized and perhaps the, the way to de-risk de this is, a, is an early production system, a phase development to de-risk it. Let's have a look at the uh, the structure here and here's a map uh, at the uh, the base wheeled and A sandstone. So this is this Cretaceous sandstone here and you can see that here's the distribution of the wells we can also see here, these are the named compartments uh, for the field. Now, some of these have not been drilled, and some of these are kind of core to a future development. Now, just because they're undrilled doesn't mean there's nothing there. In fact, you know, overall, this looks to be a, a very a large feature that could contain an awful lot of oil. In this estimate here, uh, a mid case for the A sand, there's, there's 463 million barrels just in the Wielden A sand. There are other sands uh, above. So this is a large accumulation. And uh, we're talking about 100 meters water depth. Back in November 2020, Providence, the operator, talked about a farm out agreement with Spot On, a, a Norwegian explorer, and a consortium of companies that were being put together to try and fund an early development program. But in uh, April 2021, and really, you know, in, in the, the midst of the pandemic, the farming deal was terminated. But Barry Row does look to be quite robust. That There was, back in November 2020, the K well Jacob site survey was completed. So uh, an appraisal well was ready to go. Now, I'm not sure if that appraisal well was looking to actually go down and test the Jurassic, but it seems like a seems like a great opportunity. Perhaps there could be a 2023 spud to appraise in the Wield and Ace and, and um, they had lined up a sixth generation semi-submersible rig at the time, but that'll all have to be renegotiated now. 
The news, well, really back in February 2022, the partnership and operator Providence Resources was looking to to get uh, consent from the energy minister, DEC, as they're now known in Ireland, have so far, as we understand it, uh, not got back and made a decision on that. Now, in November 2021, another significant thing, there was a competent persons report put together. It was put together by uh, RPS Energy, the consultancy, and they looked at phase 1A and a phase 1B where together there was some 81.2 million barrels of contingent resources available. Now, to achieve that, they were looking in phase A to drill five producers, one gas injector, four water injectors, and they were looking at segments one, two, and three. In phase uh, 1B, three further producers, two water injectors in segment four. Um, 15 wells for 81 million barrels, around about 5 million barrels a well. Yeah. I mean, why not? There's a lot of potential revenue here. Summary for Barry Row. Well, it is big enough. There's a decent connected reservoir. There's some concern on compartmentalisation, but that's often the case in many an oil field development. I'm sure there will be a, an economically viable uh, solution. I have every confidence that they'll be able to develop this field economically. What if things stay the way they are? Well, let's have a look at the security of supply for Ireland. And you can see here, there are essentially two interconnectors coming across here from Scotland across to to Ireland and another interconnector here. This was an article that from the, the Irish Times recently in, in July of 2022. And this is a statement from the UK's National Grid, which said that Ireland would be treated the same as Britain in any gas emergency, which seems fair. But the, the issue, of course, is that a lot of the gas that comes across Europe is coming across from uh, from Russia, from North Africa, from in, in time, potentially from the Eastern Mediterranean region. But here's where all the consumption is taking place. And these pipelines have got to supply customers in uh, Belgium, France, Germany, etc. Then has to go across and through the UK and eventually get to those interconnectors to go across to, to Northern Ireland and Ireland. Well, you know, Ireland is unfortunately at the end of the line for the gas. You know, anything that could be done to uh, reduce dependency is something that the Irish government is quite keen to be looking at. There is concern with the Russia-Ukraine situation that in 2020, about 6.3% of Ireland's products were actually imported directly from from Russia. So the dependence is more significant than for certain products like like diesel. The aim is that Ireland will become carbon neutral by 2050, but oil and gas will continue to contribute for decades. Now, it can be done efficiently. Now, peat is still used as a as a primary uh, fuel supply I- in Ireland. That's one that I really struggle with because of the environmental damage that's caused, but also because it is actually a very inefficient, very low calorific value. Makes less sense than, than even coal. Now, Germany, by way of example, has got a 100 days supply of gas storage were the supply to be suddenly disrupted. Ireland, on the other hand, has got none. It's not about production. It's not about supply. It's about consumption. And uh, the only way to reduce Irish emissions from fossil fuels is to reduce Irish demand for fossil fuels, not Irish supply of fossil fuels. Increasing energy efficiency rather than restricting fossil fuel exploration should therefore be to the forefront of climate policy. Now, the EU have recently requested a 15% reduction in supply. But, of course, Ireland is an exception. It's not part of the EU grid and it doesn't have an awful lot of, uh, of options. So what are the key takeaways? The energy crisis isn't a recent development. It's been coming for many decades. There's been disagreement and policy shifts, U-turns, there have been a few of those, and what is the long-term plan? Now, the priority must be keep the lights on and keep people warm through the coming winters. We recognise that locally produced energy is nearly always greener than imported energy. So what can Ireland do with its indigenous resources to actually exploit those and, and actually use that energy? Now, peat is declining, coal is on its way out, there is no oil currently, Barry Row is several years away yet. Gas is rapidly dwindling with Corrib in decline. There is no gas storage. There's a high reliance on intermittent uh, wind and solar, which is going to increase over the years. 
where is the backup generation? There is no nuclear. What's going to happen with hydrogen? What options are left? Well, one of the decisions it looks like is that Ireland is going to start importing electricity from, from France. Um, that's actually coming from, from nuclear. Price rises are, are inevitable. That's going to be uh, expensive. Also, the emissions reduction targets, once they're set and decided, they're going to mean upward pressure on energy prices. All we can hope for is that there will be no blackouts or brownouts. Well, do you agree with our assessment of Ireland? Is there an energy crisis? Please leave your comments below and uh, we'll follow up. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you back on our channel soon.